not sure about your level of detail or your level of knowledge, but I'd like to start very simply. So driving direction is obviously to the left side. So this is the front axle and this is the rear axle. And uh, ah, surprise, huh? So novelty for Mercedes AMG, we have the engine rear mounted in the back. So what you see here is the combustion engine from Formula One, and it's as we said, nothing which is inspired from Formula One or just carrying over some ideas from Formula One. This is a Formula One drivetrain. So for the rear, this is completely valid. It's the 1.6 liter V6 hybrid that you know from Formula One since 2014. So still driven today, 2017, with the same engine formula and the same main component. So you can see we have a beautiful scoop on top of the roof here, where the air enters, enters to, to get to the engine. And uh, yeah, I'm trying not to stand in your way for the pictures. But you can imagine the air enters from the top of the roof into these two air filters on both sides, <coughs> then goes down and enters the turbine. So we've been talking about this being the NGUH. So it's a motor generator unit heat and um, is compressing the air to a very high level, so it's massively turbocharged. And uh, if you see the turbine down here, it's really significantly bigger than anything you see on, on normal production cars. Um, so the air is being compressed here, exits here on the lower end, and enters the, the charge air cooler, which is this silver box here on the front. So also this is same principle as in the Formula One but modified a bit in package and design. So once the air is cooled and uh, compressed, it enters these two air boxes here on the top. You see these two also very characteristic for Formula One engines, and we're gonna have the same design on the hypercar in series production. So these are more or less to distribute the air into the, the six combustion chambers. So you can see we have three black ducts going down here from these air boxes into the combustion chambers. Same on the other side, so it's symmetrically. So we have uh, the six combustion chambers filled from the top with fresh air. And uh, yeah, then we end up firing the engine, the combustion chamber, and we have a direct injection of fuel. And yeah, combustion takes place. Once the fuel is burnt, the exhaust gas exits on the side, so you have these beautiful manifolds here. It's just the same thing on the other side, three times each. And then exiting towards the rear of the engine and connecting at the back of the engine into the turbine. So you might have recognized we have split the turbine system into two halves. So on the front we have the compressing wheel Excuse me. The, <laughs> sorry, I was in your picture. So on the front, you have the compressing wheel of the turbocharger, and at the back, you have the turbine wheel of the turbocharger. So it's really split into two pieces. Connected by a big shaft in the middle of the V, so we connect this turbine and the compressing wheel with a very highly rotating uh, shaft where we mount the engine on the electric motor. So the MGOH is really in the center of this V and um, is able to drive the turbine system. So although the turbine is so huge and would be quite slow in speeding up, it's, it's very responsive because of this electric motor. So the electric motor helps bringing the turbine up to speed. So as I said before, there's no turbo lag at all. And um, within a few milliseconds, you get full uh, pressure on the, on the engine. So when we follow, follow to the rear, after the turbine, we see the exhaust system of the complete engine. So this is obviously something sp uh, specific for this car. It's not carried over from Formula One because they don't need all this. It's after gas treatment, it's particulate filters, catalytic converters, and a silencer here to have a sound which is a bit appropriate, at least it's still going to be loud, of course. 
and we had this single exhaust pipe at the rear. Underneath the exhaust system you can see the transmission. So this is not only the housing for the transmission, it's also the structural piece of the rear end. So this incorporates longitudinal structures to provide stiffness for the rear end of the car. And all of the suspension is directly connected to the transmission box. The transmission bo box again is directly mounted to the engine and the engine is structurally mounted to the top of the car. So it's all like it's done in Formula 1. The gearbox, however, is a new one, so it's completely newly developed. It's not carried over from Formula 1. This would be quite impossible, although we thought about it. But everything you see here is really very, very much carryover and really authentic, right? So it's not just Formula 1 principles, it's same pieces. So everything I've just talked about concerns the rear axle. It's just driving the rear wheels. But we have something on top. So we still want to drive the front wheels as well. So it was sure for us that this car is supposed to be an all-wheel drive for excellent driving dynamics, of course, for better traction. And we have therefore implemented two electric motors on the front. It's more or less the same as the MG UK on the back, but twice. So one for each wheel. So we have 120 kilowatts on top here and 120 here. So 240 kilowatts on the front axle, which is good for traction. We can also do torque vectoring on the front because we can singularly drive each wheel. And we also have the chance to drive purely electrically when just using the front axle. So we can shut off the engine, just use the front axle to drive the car purely electrically, and as to be as said, it's at a range of about 25 kilometers. So whenever you want to come home silently, not waking up the neighbors, this is what you will use. In the center of the car, you can see the high voltage battery. So these two silver boxes here, are the high voltage battery, 800 volt, and as already mentioned before, this is four times the energy capacity of a Formula One battery. So in Formula One, obviously, package is limited, and the FIA has some restrictions for the package. So we have the freedom to increase this significantly and have just the amount of energy that we need for a perfect lap on the Nordschleife or whatever we want to do. How much do they weigh? <coughs> These batteries, um, so I can tell you that the whole drivetrain is about 420 kilograms, and uh, yeah, the battery is above 100, let's say. So we use the same cell type as in Formula One, so same technology, same cooling concept, same attachment of cells, same package, but we just use four times as many, okay? The little box on top of the battery is the DC-DC converter. So it's there to transfer the 800 volt to 12 volt or whatever we need on the system. Um, these little silver boxes all around here, you have two and you have two down here are inverters. So it's power electronics to control the electric motors and tell them what to do. Because you can imagine it's quite complex to shift around energy from one motor to the other, because they all can be driven as a motor and a generator. So the driving strategy is obviously quite complex in the system. So there's, there's both options. Mainly we would use the front axle to drive purely electrically, but we can also drive with this little 100 kilowatt MGUK down here, but then we have to rotate the engine, of course. But we can, we can do it. Whether it makes sense or not, still to be seen. I guess usually you would be satisfied with the 240 kilowatts just on the front axle. Should be enough. Should be enough for electric driving in the city. Down to the hardware. So you can also see how impressive, how impressively small these engines are. 
You know, it's really, compared to anything you see in production cars, it's really, it must be very sophisticated technology because it's just so small and powerful.